Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. Hey, welcome back, everybody. Energy healing, such a game changer to make you feel better, get you over certain challenges, whether they're physical or emotional. Reiki is part of that energy healing. We're going to go even deeper into Reiki today, learn about Holy Fire Reiki and so much more. And she's been helping people with their journey all around the world for quite some time now. Inner Journey Reiki is the name of her practice. And Purnima, Purnima Chaudhary is back with us. How are you doing today? I'm great. Thank you. Thank you, Steve. Wonderful to have you back here. And mm -hmm. I learned about this thing called Reiki eh, maybe three years ago, not even three years ago. And ever since it has been, I look forward to it. It's like going for a massage. <laughs> <laughs> if that's, mm -hmm. I don't know if that's the best way to describe it, but it's like when I have a session, you know, so, and by the way, majority have been uh, virtual and mm -hmm. just as good. And I know it's challenging for some to accept that, you know, how, how is somebody doing something going like this and they're, you know, 1500 miles away and they're going to make you feel better. But the best description I always give is you're doing it now. When you say to somebody, hey, best wishes, you know, for that surgery or, you know, I wish you well, you're sending positive energy. Well, that's what mm -hmm. you're doing when you're mm -hmm. doing Reiki with somebody. So mm -hmm. that all being said, holy fire Reiki, what makes that different? So it's a relatively newer system of Reiki. Um, you know, Reiki has been in practice uh, for a very long time, but the system that we practice is based on the foundational teachings of Dr. Mikao Yusui or Yusui Sensei as he's reverently known. And then when he established and he was teaching and practicing Reiki, uh, he had said that this energy is, um, it, it can be developed, you know? So every practitioner can uh, continue to work on improving the quality and quantity of Reiki that they channel. And so, you know, as Reiki continued to uh, be practiced by, you know, hundreds of thousands of practitioners and Reiki masters over the years, you know, uh, the energy, uh, the level of consciousness of the energy uh, continued to improve and we were tapping into higher vibrations, higher levels of consciousness. And we know that um, 2012 was a big year for mm. uh, our human collective. You know, a lot of uh, ancient cultures have um, prophesied about it. So there was a shift in the consciousness of uh, our human collective energy. And because of that, we were able to tap into higher levels of this energy. Reiki is nothing but spiritually guided life force energy. It's the universal life force energy. It's omnipresent, it's infinite, it's abundant, it's all knowing energy. And so there are infinite frequencies of this energy. Now, um, the founder of Holy Fire Reiki, who is also the founder of International Center for Reiki Training, uh, his name is William Lee Rand. He is one of the most, um, you know, renowned uh, Reiki master teachers uh, for his contributions to this modality. Uh, he was working with his spiritual teacher uh, and, and guide uh, Janice Jones, who was extremely you know, gifted. And she was able to communicate with the energies, with the um, you know, ascended masters, and um, particularly in this case, uh, Jesus or Yeshua. And so they were guided about this energy that was coming through. And it came through very quickly and significantly in January 2014. So as it was coming through, you know, uh, they received clear guidance from Yeshua on what to name it. Like he guided them to call it Holy Fire. And uh, also the way the teachings happened the attunement process, all of those things were changed uh, after uh, that, you know, that energy came through. So that was 
in 2014. And then a year later, the second frequency or the upgraded, I guess I, I, guess I should say upgraded energy uh, came through and that was called Holy Fire 2 because it was a second upgrade and so on. And, and right now we have uh, until now received five uh, upgrades of this energy. So it's uh, a registered trademark as well. You will always see an R next to the Holy Fire. And it's a system of Reiki, but it's also uh, the energy and it's Holy Fire, which is, um, if, if I were to translate it, it's Christ consciousness, or uh, in Sanskrit, we call it Kutastha Chaitanya, which is, mm -hmm. you know, the purest form of source energy. And uh, so this energy has many, many, many qualities. And I myself, you know, I've received um, several upgrades of this energy and um, ex had incredible healing experiences with this. So I, I hope that made sense. So it's, it's, an, it's an upgraded energy. Um, we have been practicing this modality for, you know, 100 plus years now. And uh, we're tapping into higher and higher frequencies of this energy. And I, I feel like it will continue as we evolve, our energy evolves to a higher level of consciousness. I, I feel like we will continue to receive higher upgrades of this energy. I am shocked that it, it was only in 10 years ago that this came mm -hmm. to light to help us all better understand it. Why did it only come to light at that time? Why wasn't, you know, you know people have been practicing Reiki for what, a hundred years almost? Why mm -hmm. is it, why is it only now? It's because, you know, it depends on our level of consciousness, our energies as well. So the person who is channeling these energies, for example, uh, William Lee Rand, who was, you know, uh, channeling, the earlier frequencies and also there's a system called the karuna system and um so i'm also a karuna master by the way but we received that in in uh, uh 1995 that's when that system was established and that was only for reiki masters so we did receive some additional symbols uh in the later part of the century but then and now, especially um, in the 21st century, if you compare the level of consciousness of uh, the human collective and, you know, especially certain masters who have been working with, uh, with energy healing for a very long time, you know, they have raised their level of consciousness to, uh, you know, such a, I guess, level or, or frequency that they're tapping into these higher energies and they're able to channel them. So, and, and now, you know, since COVID, we've had more additional energies that are so much more powerful. Even the, the upgraded energy of Holy Fire that we received uh, during COVID and the one that we received during, uh, like right after the war started, they are, incredibly powerful compared to the one that we received in 2014. Now, it's been said that there's, and by the way, even before we go to that question, I'm seeing more of this come together in terms of the consciousness when we talk about 2012. Mm -hmm. And not to go down this rabbit hole because it would get very woo-woo for some of us, you know, trying to mm -hmm. understand this. Um, mm -hmm. Do you believe what we're talking about here is the shift in dimensions from third, fourth, fifth? Absolutely. Okay. I have experienced that in my personal life journey and my spiritual journey, because, you know, maybe like a decade ago when I became aware of uh, my multidimensionality and, you know, raising my consciousness to the fifth dimension, it used to be a very conscious effort to do that. As I'm experiencing life, you know, day-to-day -day life experiences, it would be a conscious effort. 
And now with this energy practice of holy fire and Karuna and new earth, you know, this ascension from 3D to 5D is almost effortless, I would say. Hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that being said, this new energy, if you will, is this similar to the attunement that uh, Reiki masters have as you move your levels up? Do you have more to work with, if you will? Is this kind of similar to that? Yes, it's similar to that. Now, there is a difference uh, in the attunement process. Uh, you know, some of the listeners uh, may not know this difference because for a person who doesn't know much, you know, Reiki is Reiki. But in the the way the attunement process happens, so with the, you know, the old system, there used to be uh, a, a process of attunement where the Reiki master teacher would be the the person doing that attunement process, meaning like they would be, you know, uh, doing the violet breath. And there was this whole process. It's, it was like a ritual that they did. They activated the chakras and and were able to, uh, you know, I guess, place those energies within the student's energy field. Now, with Holy Fire System, what happens is the master teacher is bypassed. The attunement process is done directly by Holy Fire. And hmm. so the attunement itself is extremely potent and powerful. It is life-changing. You know, most of my students who uh, receive these uh, activations, they say this was life-changing for them. You know, your frequency wow. changes because um, why it is different is because it doesn't matter how evolved the master teacher is, how much work they've done on themselves, how much healing they've done for themselves, and how high uh, their level of consciousness is, there's always unhealed ego. There are always shadows. So when that energy is passing through them during the attunement process, it is being lowered uh, in the level of consciousness compared to if we, it were to directly come from source, you know, it's a very pure high level vibration. So in the holy fire, uh, we call them placements and ignition. So placements are done for the lower, like the Reiki one and two, and then ignitions are done for the master level. So what happens then is this energy is bypassing the Reiki master teacher. And because it is coming directly from source, it's in the purest form. And this whole process is a very nuanced process where, you know, the energy will scan the individual and it is, you know, giving them exactly what they can handle and, you know, what they're capable of receiving. So it's a much better system of, of attunement. Uh, I feel like in my experience, and I've done this for a long time, when even with the old system, I used to attune my students. And those same students got attuned in this method, you know, holy fire method. And they were saying, wow, this is so much more powerful. So uh, that is the difference. And And, you know, what I also recommend to my students is that they continue to receive these uh, placements and ignitions because it is like peeling off layers. You know, it is peeling off the, the shadows that we are holding, the, the dormant self, the shadow self, the subconscious that is holding these energies that make us react to situations and not respond. With this, you know, what happens is we reach that state of, um, and it's also known as the path to Anchindit Sume, which is uh, an enlightened state of being where regardless of what is happening in your life or in the collective, you're able to maintain peace in your heart. You know, it doesn't shake you up. <laughs> and so with that level of calmness, you're able to make better decisions or you're able to respond and not react 
you know so there is i i found a big difference in this whole process and i you know absolutely love um you know initiating people to to this way hmm i detected you said a little while ago that holy fire reiki can help you feel or put you in the higher dimension seems very easily done am i getting mm -hmm. that yes hmm would other reiki do that yes absolutely reiki is reiki you know but again it depends on the practitioner who's channeling it you know uh, i always give this example uh imagine you have a garden hose and it's um you know um you've put it uh on the faucet and you've turned the faucet on full force you know there is uh unlimited we will say there is abundant water supply now that water start flowing through the whole hose and if there's a kink in the hose at the other end there will just be a trickle of water right or if there is anything blocking that hose, there won't be enough water coming out, even if you have it full force, right? So it is like that. We are tapped into infinite abundant source energy as a practitioner. But if we are harboring a lot of, you know, negative energy, a lot of um, unhealed ego shadows, uh, the Reiki we, we channel is going to be significantly impacted by that because the Reiki will actually flow to the practitioner first before it goes anywhere else. So, you know, it, and they've measured uh, people, like they've measured the Reiki hands, you know, pra different practitioners channeling Reiki and they've found it's a spectrum. Uh, so every person who channels Reiki, it's different, you know? And um, so, Again, you know, coming back to that, raising that um, level of consciousness. When a person is channeling, it is automatically releasing those lower energies and clearing the channel, clearing the aura of that person. And that itself will, uh, you know, immediately raise the, the frequency of that person. Does that make sense? Yeah. And I should have thought of this earlier but as an example and we only have like three or four minutes left if i gave you full permission could you tap into my energy field and tell me like that what what might be stuck yes yes because i actually am clairsentient but we have different ways of doing it and so when i connect with your energy field instantly through my intuition you know intuition works through the clear senses and i'm able to tell exactly which chakras are imbalanced or you know uh not harmonious where which side of your aura is more blocked uh sides or, or back or front all of that and also you know they're impacting certain organs and organ systems and i can physically feel it so i'm able to tell you know exactly where that um di disease line or that blocked energy is located so that and, and then you know when we channel reiki and we do the scan again that uh, block is gone and people experience it you know they feel well like in in their whole body they feel really uh, there's this sense of like well-being that comes with the session. Have you um, encountered situations where you read somebody's energy and made a suggestion? You're not a doctor. You don't diagnose. Disclaimer. No. Get another, getting no. it out. Getting that out of the way. Yes. <laughs> but have you detected something in somebody and said you might want to check into that? Have you felt some? something stuck that could be uh you know a medical challenge absolutely yeah many many times countless wow. times i i don't even uh, know the count of people <laughs> that that has you know this has happened and not just you know um sometimes it's 
it's also ancestral energy or a different lifetime um, energy. And that also comes through many times. And so I'm able to pinpoint even like the organ or organ system that might be involved. Now we are guided by Reiki and we never, you know, make any claims or, or diagnose anything because it's unethical for us to do that. Sure. But we can always suggest that, oh, I, I found in this area and maybe, you know, would be a good idea to, but you know, what happens uh, invariably uh, that I have experienced is that that person will say, oh my God, yes, I just did this MRI or this scan or this test and they found this and it made it absolutely spot on what, what you detected. So that happens too many times. Hmm. Next time we get together, is it possible for you, just as an example, do, do, do some Reiki on me just to show how it works, yeah. the process, because unless you've experienced it before, many may feel apprehensive. Like, I don't know what she's going to be doing over there. I don't know. Uh, I feel, you know, even if it's just a mini session mm -hmm. that yeah. uh, it would open others eyes and it it may be a day before I feel the benefits. Let's be honest that that, that could, that's happened to me before. Uh, there mm -hmm. have even been times where I had Reiki on the weekend, Monday morning comes along and bing, I had so much clarity on a situation. It was just, mm -hmm. wow, that's what I need to do. Okay. Move forward. Mm -hmm. And I, I truly believe it was as a result of a uh, Reiki session over the weekend. Um, mm -hmm. Bernima, how do we find you? How do we connect? I'm sure there's lots of questions about this as well. Yeah, so I, my website has all the information, uh, innerjourneyreiki.com. And then uh, people can also find me on Instagram. Uh, my handle is at Purnima underscore Chaudhary. This stuff is real. It's been proven. There have been well-known scientists over the years. The guy, Einstein, I think you might have heard his name started a lot of this, or at least brought some of it to light. Uh, harnessing the power of energy to help you heal, so important, and it's right here. And thank you for giving us the insight on Holy Fire Reiki. You know, I've always heard about it. Um, it just goes to show that we are progressing very quickly. It's, it's almost exponentially now mm -hmm. that more and more mm -hmm. people are plugged into this, accept it. Um, mind blown for me that it, it's only been since... I, it, 10 years holy fire reiki has come to light uh but very exciting and uh <laughs> i love it mm -hmm. um yeah mm -hmm. thank you for being here and uh, looking forward next time we uh we get a chance to get together yes thank you so much thank looking you looking forward we'll be right back are you looking for even more of the podcasts and hosts that you love? The Podcast Business News Network is proud to announce that you now have even more ways to listen live. Check out the MyTuner Radio, Online Radio Box, and Simple Radio apps on iOS and Android, or find us online. Search for Business News Network on MyTuner-Radio.com, or search Podcast Business News Network on Streama.com and OnlineRadioBox.com slash US. Take your podcast on the go, and don't miss a minute of the action. Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. For nearly 2,000 severely injured veterans, everyday life has become filled with barriers. Day-to-day -day simple tasks can become pretty daunting. I have to carry my chair up two flights of steps or have somebody do it for me. What scares me the most is just the falling. When I'm struggling with my house, I think, you know, to have that one great barrier just knocked down, I mean, it's... It's crucial. Home for Our Troops is a wonderful nonprofit that builds a mortgage free, fully adaptive, handicap accessible house, and there's no catch. It'll be our very first home that we've ever owned. This is a game changer. This is where your life begins again. We need you to join us in completing this important mission. Please visit hfotusa.org and help build homes and rebuild lives. Because of you, everything's it's going to be okay.